Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode we're going to paint the Persuader class tank droid from Atomic Mass Games Star Wars Legion. The tank droid is pretty fast and fun to paint, as we get to play quite freely with some nice heavy textures and weathering, along with some easy to achieve tonal variation. I'm going to begin by assembling the vehicle before priming the model in black, followed with some quick xenothal highlights applied from above. I'm then going to use a simple grayscale and a combination of dry brushing, edge highlighting and sponge work to fully establish the volumes, highlights and textures, a technique sometimes known as underpainting. We can then apply some semi-translucent tones on top using the contrast colours, nicely preserving most of the textures and highlights underneath. For the finishing touches we can then paint details like the eyes and provide a final layer of weathering and edge highlights, and for a detailed look at how I painted the B1 battle droids you can refer back to episode 15. Let's begin. The model comes with an intimidating number of sprues and parts, but is reasonably straightforward to assemble. As with most of the current Star Wars Legion models, it's recommended that we use plastic glue for the assembly, and here I'm using the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. With all of these little cogs it's a good idea to dry fit the parts before gluing to ensure that the pegs and holes correctly match up. When gluing on the tracks I found it easiest to attach the longer strip on the top first. We can then work our way around placing the remaining pieces. I'll be gluing down the smaller structures such as the cannons and the eyes later on. I'm now priming the model in black and you can see that I've chosen to use some white tack to mask off some of the joints where I'll be gluing the remaining elements down in a while. This isn't essential however, I just like to glue plastic to plastic when possible. I'm now using Vallejo's cold grey to provide some xenothal highlights from above. And if you don't have an airbrush, a quick pass using any mid-tone grey from a rattle can will also be fine. I'm now using some pure white to push the values up further, mainly for the B1s. You can see that I've also primed the base in black, and here I'm providing my basing as described in the earlier episodes, using Vallejo's brown earth basing paste followed with some dry brushing and some shade. We're now ready to do some underpainting. The first thing I'm going to do here is simply provide quite a heavy dry brush using pure white to help sharpen all of the main details and edges. This is the extra large dry brush by Rosemary & Co, but makeup brushes are also good for this kind of work. Whilst doing this I'm also taking into account the direction of the light. I 
I'm now just using a regular brush to ensure that all the main edges receive a nice strong highlight. Next I'm going to mix in a little black to produce a pale grey tone and I'm going to begin sponging on some texture. I'm dabbing this over most of the model but we'll be using a slightly darker mix for the more shadowed areas in a moment. I'm now mixing in some additional black to produce more of a mid-tone grey which I'm using for some of the darker sections of the model and simply to increase the tonal range. And here I'm using pure white for the brightest areas of highlight. I'm now freely doing some additional dry brushing with the white along with some mark making, edge highlighting and some stippling until I'm happy with the overall look. Once we've achieved a nice sense of volume and richness of texture, we can go ahead and add some colour. To colour the tank droid, I've chosen to use Basilicanum Grey and Griff Charger Grey to provide the main bluish metallic tones, to which I'll be adding some Skeleton Horde to add some tonal contrast and variety. I'll also be using some thinned ethermatic blue for one specific area, and I might use some Margos Purple later on to add some final tints and colour modulation. It's important to note that the contrast colours vary quite a bit in terms of their level of opacity, and you can see that I've deliberately chosen colours that are all at the lighter, more translucent end of the spectrum. This is why I'm not using colours like Black Templar, which is much too heavy and opaque to achieve the look that I'm after. I'm going to start by painting the cannons using the Basilicanum Grey, Griff Charger Grey and some Skeleton Horde, freely blending the colours as I go. Once that's partially dried, I quite like to wipe the paint off the main raised details and areas of highlight. For the main body of the tank droid, I'm first painting the inner circular structure with the ethermatic blue, which I'm thinning with some contrast medium on the model itself. I'm 
I'm now working around the rest of the droids using the same tones as before. As the Basilicanum Grey is the darkest of the tones, I'll naturally be using it a bit more heavily for the more shadowed areas. We can freely thin the paint out with some contrast medium for the larger areas of highlight. I'm also introducing a little of the skeleton horde onto the central area which we tinted with the ethermatic blue a moment ago. We can already see some pleasing variations in tone, yet the underlying values and textures are still nicely showing through. There's nothing wrong with adding a few scratches as we go. Once dry, the tank droid is already looking good enough to hit the table. If you want to take things a little further, join me now for some finishing touches. The first thing I'd like to do is use some additional contrast colour to darken the area surrounding the eye slit. I'm then giving the inner eye an undercoat of pure white. Before applying some fluorescent tones on top. I'm starting with some fluorescent yellow mixed with a little of the red. And I'm now mixing in some red mixed with magenta. The next thing I'd like to do is provide some dusty weathering or cast to match the surrounding terrain. For me, that means using something like Scale Colors Orange Leather. Naturally, I want to hit the tracks with this, as well as the underside of the bodywork.
I've now decided to glue the smaller structures to the vehicle. As mentioned, I'm simply painting the battle droids as detailed back in episode 15, once again using some skeleton horde mixed with a little Agaros dunes, followed with a few edge highlights. I've now decided to mix some speed metal into some white and provide some semi-metallic edge highlights to the tank droid. I might also use this to apply a limited amount of chipping with the sponge. To attach the model to the base, I've chosen to use PVA glue which has a super slow drying time, allowing me to ensure that I'm happy with the position before leaving it to set. I've now chosen to use some Typhus Corrosion and some Rust Tones to add a few touches of rusty weathering. I'm also boosting the saturation of the orange using the orange rust tone. And lastly, I've decided to use some thinned Margos purple to add a final and quite subtle bit of colour modulation. And this completes the Persuader class tank droid. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. As usual you'll find a full product list in the video description along with all of the places I can be found online. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!